I'm Ryan Barron, and I play bass in Days Fade. I'm Mike Badinsky, and I play guitar in Days Fade. I'm Ian Doomer, and I play drums in Days Fade. I'm Jordan, I'm the new vocalist for Days Fade. Days Fade started in 2004. Uh, me and a few friends just got together and started jamming and writing songs. Ryan Barron approached me and asked me if uh, I would take over for their second guitar player because he was leaving and uh, I was a big fan of Days Fade at the time so I accepted. Once we got Mike on board, we started looking for a new drummer and I thought of my good friend Ian Doomer. Baron asked me if I would take over on drums, and um, I mean, I was at every band practice. I played drums myself, a beginner, but, um, you know, I played for a year or so, and uh, I was at every band practice. I was a huge fan of Days Fade before I, um, before I joined, so I mean, I knew all the songs pretty much off by heart, so once I sat down on the kit and we had our first practice, it uh, worked out well. When we started out, I did vocals, um, and then our bass player left, so I took over on bass. And we started looking for a new singer, and we found Sean Slade. And then uh, it was kind of all the pieces to the puzzle, and we started playing shows. Shows are crazy, high intensity, lots of washing. Yeah, tour tour is a great experience, one of the best so far in my life. Um, you know, the, the shows were good. A lot of the, a lot of the shows were fantastic, a lot better than I thought they'd be. And um, you know, a lot of the kids loved loved what we had to offer. And um, like I said, we had some pretty big successful shows. After a year or so, we added Ryan Vaughns as a second guitar player. And from there, we started touring in southwestern Ontario and Quebec and a little bit of the United States. Tours usually last one to two weeks, and uh, we usually play a show every night or every other night. I want to take it back. I want to take it back my life. You know, I uh, experienced how it was on the road, being on the road for three weeks or so and living in, you know, a van pretty much, um, spending the night at people's houses that we met or promoters or, 
whatever, but overall it was a great time and uh, yeah, one of the best experiences for sure of my life. Life on tour was amazing, uh, de definitely the best years of my life. I couldn't have asked for better guys to be on the road with and we made a lot of friends and got to meet a lot of really sweet bands. Uh, we toured with some bands like Everbridge Burn, Uplift, Rhinoceros, Gravemaker. I could probably go on all day about tour stories, but I don't think any of them are PG. Yeah, we played a show in Montreal, and uh, actually it was one of the best shows. I had a lot of fun, but we needed a place to stay. We stayed at the Sound Girls house. Uh, it was a really bad neighborhood. Grimy, like, grungy like apartment type thing. I don't even know what to call it. It looked like a storefront. There was garbage everywhere inside there, mattresses on the floor, uh, garbage can with the toilet seat on it. And it was just too much. I slept in the van that night. I think Baron did too. After a couple of years later, uh, everyone started kind of moving away, going to school. Uh, so eventually we weren't doing much, so we had to call it quits. I really loved playing in Days Fade, but unfortunately we had to play our last show in 2010. <laughs> Yeah, our last show turned out well. Um, a lot of people came out to see us. Um, the only thing that sucked is it was coming to an end, and obviously none of us wanted that. We were good friends. We've been uh, on tour together, spent most of our time together, and uh, just a weird feeling knowing that it was going to come to an end. So two years later, I moved back to Windsor and reconnected with Mike, and we started talking about getting Days Fade back together. Yeah, so I came back from school uh, up in Toronto. I did an audio engineering course there, just to learn about recording and stuff, and uh, once I got back into town, Baron actually gave me a call, and he was talking talking to me about how him and Mike have been talking about, you know, getting the band back together, and I mean, I was really excited right away. I haven't played my drums, you know, in a few months. I'm dying to be on the kid again, and uh, obviously, now that we're older, more mature, I, you know, figured we could write a lot better material, so I was excited to get the band started again. Unfortunately, our old vocalist Sean still lives in London, but we talked to him and he gave us the go-ahead to start looking for a new singer. I knew this one singer named Jordan White Mayhew, and we called him up, and he was interested in trying out for the band. Since Juggernaut broke up, I've been dying to do, I've been dying to just make music, so I decided to, to join Days Fade. Can't wait to get this going. Recently, I had to do a project for my sound and media class where we had to do an audio recording. So I thought it was a good idea to try and get the band in there and get a recording of one of our new tracks. Day one in the studio, we laid down a ghost track. The ghost track is basically a uh, guitar track playing for the, to the right timing so we all have something to listen to and get the right timing for the song. For the scratch disc, I went into the studio and listened to a metronome and just played to the proper timing. Yeah, once we completed the ghost track, we were ready to record the drums. The ghost track's just a quick, uh, rough guitar track to a click, you know, play to a click so that I can hear it and play, play it on time. And uh, yeah, so after the ghost track, we did the drums and then moved on to all the other instruments. Yeah, so we uh, set up the mics and, you know, my little home studio type thing. Um, the biggest issues we had was, you know, the mic placement to get all the levels of the the right levels that we wanted and uh, I mean the noise reduction and all that stuff. Ian brought me the drum tracks which allowed us to start recording the guitar and bass tracks. We used SM57s for our amps and I also plugged my bass amp direct in. We brought Ryan to my house to record his bass. Uh, we used the 57 on the amp as well as ran it direct. By going digital, it helps you to get a fuller sound out of the bass. We recorded my guitar at the jam space. We mic'd my amp with a SM57. That's one of the best mics for picking up guitar amps. The process usually takes a couple hours and uh, 
some problems we ran into were that we weren't familiar with the equipment we were using because we were boring the jam spaces equipment. The guys finished the instrumental part of the song, so I decided to put my lyrics to it and it fits perfectly. So we went back in the studio, got my vocals down so that Mike and Ian can mix it all together. We recorded Jordan's vocals at one of the small studios at the University of Windsor. We used the condenser microphone and uh, his vocals turned out really well. I'm really excited to have Jordan doing vocals for us. He brings a lot to the table. He's got a really powerful voice and it's, I think it's going to work out awesome. Yeah, so once we got all the um, tracks recorded, all the instruments, um, Mike brought me all the WAV files to bring into Pro Tools and give it a general mix. Uh, I did a rough mix of it, you know, everything was rushed, so um, I just started with the drums, did a mix of the drums, then some bass, added another bass track, um, and I did did some stuff to the guitar. The, the guitar tone was fine, so I didn't really have to do much, and then the vocals, you know, I just doubled them up. Uh, threw some Waves plugins on there, compressed them, and uh, I think overall it turned out pretty good. I've never been this excited to play a show. We still have more songs to write, but we're hoping to start back playing shows in spring of 2013. The band and all our fans are looking forward to this comeback. It's going to be fun times.